Hi, welcome to Lizzie Yu. My name is Merle Brian Holt and I'm really glad that you joined us today. We're going to get more familiar with the layout, edit, and the pattern functions today by creating two beautiful blocks with the Quilt Magician. Now when we get started with the Quilt Magician, sometimes people ask, is it important to turn on the machine first or the power box to the Quilt Magician? Remember that our machine is similar to a computer. When it turns on, it looks for all of the elements that are attached to it, all the accessories. For instance, it looks for the handlebars and the encoders. Um, it will also be looking for the Quilt Magician. So it's most effective to turn the power box to the Quilt Magician on first before you turn your machine on. And you can see that our the magician is ready to go. He's highlighted. The first thing that you are prompted to do is to create a quilt area. The quilt area is um, the area you have to work with between the two, the take-up rail and the upper rail. Um, so you only need to set it once for the whole quilt unless there is some kind of air you need to get around. Um, just a little thought, if you are going to fill the quilt area with a pattern and do that all the way down the quilt, remember to create a quilt area that's slightly smaller than the initial one. For instance, this is an 18 inch um, throat. I would create a 12 inch quilt area so that I can fit everything in as the quilt builds up on the take up rail. All right. To create or set a quilt area, move the machine to the back left of your quilt area and then touch plus. It will prompt you then to move to the lower right. Before we move, I'd like to note, you to notice down here in the lower right hand corner, we have an X and a Y coordinate. Right now they're at zero. The first point in your quilt area, the far back left, is zero, zero. It's also known as the home. That is where um, when we open up a, a saved layout, that is where we find its orientation to tell it no, where to be when it uh, goes ahead and stitches out the pattern boxes that we have previously saved as a layout. All right, so then second, point is in the lower right. I like to come up and bump against the bar and then back off just a little bit. We don't want the machine to be touching the bar during its function because it will become disoriented and not know where it is. So I'm going to move this back over where we can have the camera on the screen. Notice the prompt that's up now tells me the table width and height. If you ever see a zero on one of those, um, make sure you check your cables and make sure that they're engaged because that is usually what the problem is, is that we've got a cable that hasn't been engaged. So we're going to say OK with the check mark. And what we can see on the screen now is our quilt area. It can also be used as a pattern box. We're go not going to use it as a pattern box today. <clears throat> the first box that we are going to create is a square. I have stitched out a square, it's, I believe a 10 inch square, on our quilt here to simulate a block on your quilt. And we're going to show you how to place multiple patterns to create a beautiful block. We go to Layout, which is the fourth icon down from the top on the left. Everything in Layout has to do with pattern boxes. We look at the very top. That's to create a whole new layout. It will erase everything that's on there at the time. The next one down is to save a layout. 
or to open up a layout, I'm sorry. The third one down is to save it. The second one with the file is actually to open up a layout you've saved. The fourth icon down is to add a pattern box. The next one with the minus sign is to uh, delete a pattern box, the current one that's in the window. And then one with the wrench is to um, adjust the current pattern box that you have. And the beauty of that one is that it will save the pattern that you're using and you'll be able to tell it to stitch out in a different place. The bottom icon is to set the quilt area over again. This will keep all your pattern boxes um, and not delete them. So that's where that one is different from the new layout at the top. All right, I want to create a square pattern box. So I'm going to touch the plus and the prompt tells me to go to the first point. I'm going to start up here in the top left corner. Now it's going to measure from where the needle is. So keep that in mind. If you want it to come right out to the edge, put your needle over the corner. If you want a small little um, margin in there, bring the foot in a, a little bit. And I'm going to say this is my first point by touching the plus mark. It's best to go in a counterclockwise direction. So I'm going to come down to the lower left here and plus for another point. We can do three to a multiple of points to create different shapes. Now if you notice on the screen we have the Quill Magician tracing what I have just created by connecting the dots. It doesn't connect all the movements I make, it only connects the dots I create by the corners. Now one nice thing about our crosshairs, notice if I should accidentally not make that box square, you can see how it doesn't line up with the crosshairs. Those crosshairs help us to square up a, a, block, a pattern box that we might create. Now that I'm at my last point, I'm going to touch check mark to say, okay, I'm done. As I move my machine away so you can move the crosshairs, you can see that we have now a pattern box and the quilt area. This is the layout view. If I want to just view the pattern box I'm working on, I will come down here to the lower left and touch this little icon that looks like a nine patch with only one square filled in. And now we are looking at just that one pattern box rather than the whole layout. If you look down across the bottom, you can see that we have two of two. That means I'm on the second pattern box of two because the Quilt Magician counts the quilt area as the first box. Notice I can use the arrows to go back and forth between pattern boxes. All right, now we need to put a pattern in our box. So I'm going to go to the third icon down on the left that looks like a file and touch it. It opens up our patterns and there are a lot of options here that we'll go over in detail on another webinar on how to import and export and how to assign tags. But today we're going to learn how to search for and find the patterns we need. The first pattern um, we want is bachelor button. I'm going to touch that open field just above filter and it opens a typing page where I'll be able to type in um, bachelor. I'm going to touch bachelor and say done. Didn't find it, did it? I'm going to say buttons because it is a bachelor button. Okay, that was a better result. Here are all the ones that have button in their name. And we want this squarish one. So I'm going to touch it. Notice it highlights it. Over here on the right, we have some choices. We could X out and say, never mind, I don't want to choose a pattern right now. Um, the one in the middle is to smart scale it before you even get back into the 
pattern box you've created so that saves time if you know that's what you want to do. That's not what we're doing today. So we're going to touch the check mark which means okay this is the one I want. <clears throat> now we are going to want to put this on point. That means we're going to have to rotate it. So if we come down three icons there is a rotation icon I'm going to touch and I want to rotate it 45 degrees to the right. Right here we have that little icon which makes it really easy to do. Now I want to have four of these in the center of my block. So I'm going to come up to repeat which is the very top icon and down here it says repeat horizontally. I'm going to repeat two and I want to repeat vertically two. Now you say, my goodness, why is it so huge compared to the pattern box? Well, we're going to scale it down and have it fit just right. But I want you to see some other options on our repeat icon. Not only can we repeat the patterns we've chosen, but we can also space them differently. Now I'm going to uh, space them dramatically so you can see and we're going to move them back. But see how you could space them to um, make it fit exactly like you want it. If you want to change it quickly you can touch the field and I can touch zero and say OK and it's back where we had it. Another fun feature is offset. If I touch the minus on offset, it's going to move the even rows to the left. If I touch the plus mark, it's going to move the even rows to the right. Get it back down to zero. All right, we don't want them offset, but I wanted you to see that. Now also notice down here in the right bottom, it says autofill. We could choose to autofill a pattern box as well, and the quilt magician will scale it to fit. All right, so the next thing we need to do is get this to fit in here, because we want to not only have this in the center of our block, but we also want to put some corners on it. So let's go ahead and go down to scale, which is the fourth icon. And let's look at this for a moment. We have some draw bars here that we can actually nudge it larger uh, horizontally and vertically. Or we can tell, ask the uh, quilt magician to scale it for us. We also have the option to have it scaled proportionally by have, touching the padlock or non-proportionally. I want it proportioned so I'm going to touch the padlock. Notice how it closes and it will keep the proportions when I touch smart scale. Now magically the quilt magician has put that on point in our block that we've created. We want to put some corners on here. So we're going to, I'll show you another way to find a pattern. We're going to touch pattern and um, notice we don't have quite as many tags as we did before. If you need all of the tags back up we touch filter and they all come back up and we want to touch corners this time because I know that the, the pattern I want is in corners. It happens to be this JSM6 and I'm going to touch it and say OK with the check mark. Now this happened to go in, right in the right place very conveniently. We wanted it up in the left upper corner but I think it could be a little bit bigger. So let's go into the scale which is four down and since I don't want it to fill the space by smart scaling. I am going to nudge it using my slide bars, but I also am going to make sure the proportion padlock is closed so that as I do so I, can, I only have to touch one of the slide bars. The other one will move accordingly. 
All right, now it looks really good to me, but we could actually zoom in and to see if it actually is the way we want it. If I touch pan right here, I'm able to move it down and look, or I'll say I can actually ask it to zoom to the needle. I think it can be a tiny bit bigger. Oh, a little too much. There, that's good in my book. All righty, so now we're going to go back out to, to view the whole block. You can just touch your view here and it'll go back out to the whole block. We're going to put another one of these in the other corners and we want our little swirls to face in toward the center. If we ensure that this, block, this pattern is chosen, I'm not sure if you can see with the camera, but there are little bubbles around it, little registration marks showing that that pattern is selected. We come over and edit. The plus and minus are in relationship to your patterns. So I want to duplicate the pattern that's selected, so I'm going to touch plus to duplicate it. And it's kind of hard to see, but it's in here. Oh, you know what? It jumped out and actually duplicated the wrong one. So let's fix that. See the negative mark is going to delete the one that was uh, repeated. All right, now we've got this one selected. Plus, we have another one here. It's kind of hiding um, amongst the other stitches, but we need to move it. So let's go into Move, which is the second icon down. We have some great features here. Along the bottom we have the horizontal movement. Right here we have an, a triangle that has a line in front of it. That indicates that we can move our pattern to the very edge, the right edge of our pattern box. I'm going to touch it. See it bounces over there, but we want it to be facing the other direction. Um, I'm going to make sure it's at the very top as well by touching the top arrow there. Okay. And now I need to have it mirror imaged vertically. So I'm going to come over to the far right hand side and this that looks like an open book is the vertical mirror image. And you can see that it has turned to face the other direction. Now we need another one in the next corner, the bottom right corner. So we're going to make sure it's selected and then touch plus. And we have another one. But we want it down here. We're already in move. So we want it down in the lower corner at the bottom and on the right hand side. Um, so let's go ahead and turn it before we move it just so you can watch it nest in where it belongs. We need it to be mirror imaged upside down. So I'm going to touch the book that looks sideways. And there it's in the right position. I'm going to come to the vertical position and tell it to go to the bottom of the box. And then I am going to come to the horizontal position and tell it to go to the right edge of the box. And there it goes. Isn't this a fun, exciting way to make a box? All right, so now we're going to make sure that this pattern is selected once again and touch the plus mark. There's another one, and we need it to be uh, mirror imaged or vertically. Oh, wrong touch. I no notice I touched the save option. I need to go a little lower and touch touch the mirror image and there it's in the right position. So now I'm going to come and touch the left far move button. Make sure that it's all the way down by touching the bottom move button and there we go. Now while we're looking at those move arrows, um, notice in the center of this vertical line we have two arrows facing each other that will center 
the pattern that's selected vertically. We have one similar to that on the vertical row and that will center it horizontally. These other arrows that are in boxes will nudge it and move it in the direction that it's pointing. Okay, notice our box looks quite nice and it's filled. If you were concerned about spacing, you're able to use your zoom option and make sure it's just the way you want it. Now we are going into the home, the little house, which actually has all of our stitch options on it. It has go, which is the green ball, and it has stop, which is the red ball. Keep in mind, every time you touch the red ball, it will go back to the beginning of the pattern. So when you're in the process of stitching, if you need to stop it, please use the pause first to make sure that um, you really do want to go back to the beginning before you touch the stop. All right, now some other icons we have down this right-hand side is we have a picture of a needle, which is our needle controller. The needle controller, when it's selected like it is now, will actually stitch out the pattern that we desire. If it is deselected, it will just trace it. And this is a good option so that you can see if it's fitting in exactly where you want it to be. Underneath the needle controller is the stitches per inch, so you can go in and choose how many stitches per inch you would like. I'm going to choose 12 just because this is a little bit intricate and we want it to go around all the corners beautifully. Just a reminder, the next three little padlocks with arrows are channel locks. We have horizontal, vertical, and diagonal uh, channel locks that you can actually set the diagonal to a certain degree that you desire. The bottom one is nesting, which will be the topic of another webinar. All right, so we want it to go. So I'm going to touch the green button. Notice it's going to always warn us about having the needle up because if the machine moves with the needle down, you're going to have a tear in your quilt. Also, we have an option to X out and say, wait a minute, I need to do something else before I start. We can change the pattern order, which we're going to do in the next box, so you'll be able to see how that works. We have set start, just in case we need to start in the middle of our pattern. But we haven't started yet, so we don't need that. We're going to touch OK, we want to go. And the machine is going to move to its starting place. Notice that now we have a pause option on the bottom, which I recommend you use when you need to stop. And, and analyze whether you really want to touch the uh, stop button or not. Now I've come up with this a little flossing method that I use um, so that I don't have to move the machine away to bring up the bobbin. What I'm going to do, I don't know if you can see this on the screen. Um, Michael, can you show them? I grab hold, after it's taken a stitch, I grab hold of the needle thread and just like I floss teeth, I'm going to floss that bobbin thread up. Can you see that the, it came up for me? And I don't have to do any of the moving the, uh, the machine around. Now I also advise that when you um, start sewing with the Quill Magician to gently hold on to the, both of the threads so it doesn't push any loops to the back of your quilt. Okay, we can go back to the screen now for a moment. All right, now I'm going to hold on to that thread and I'm going to check yes for it to start. It's going to tie off for me and start stitching. Now I want to pause it for a moment so that I can trim my threads. Now while we have it paused, let's look at the options when it's paused. We have a thread break option. What that means is that if we touch it, we'll be able to move our machine to the side. For instance, if our thread did break, or if we need to change our bobbin. Or we can go ahead and say start. On the side of the screen is a number 40 that's telling you how fast the Quill Magician is set to run at its fastest speed during this process. You can see that it is slowing down on these little uh, points that it's making. 
so it's not going to run at 40 the whole time. Internally, the Quill Magician is set so that it won't run any faster than 40% because of the intricacy of the patterns that we use. It's more accurate if it's a tiny bit slower to go around those bends to make the small stitches. Now while this is stitching out, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, some things with the Quilt Magician that are good to know. One thing is, when you're all finished for the day, you need to close the app. And I will show you at the end how to do that, but I wanted to make sure that we think about it. At the end of the day, and you're ready to close the app, if you need to save your layout, you need to do that. Um, if you aren't saving, that's fine. But we need to go onto the screen and open up the screen on the Android itself that shows you that the, which apps are active at the moment. And you may have several things active. You may be, have, have been listening to music, or you may have um, been using the camera earlier and hadn't closed it, something like that. But you will see that the Quill Magician is open. It will be a little box on the screen, and you'll simply swipe it away to close it. And that's the best way to shut it down for the day so that there won't be any confusion when you start up on another day. Now this uh, just had a great big jump stitch. That's another important thing to know about the Quilt Magician. It comes to you with a zero tolerance of jump stitches. Now, some people who are new to quilting may wonder what a jump stitch is. A jump stitch is where one pattern ends and a new one begins and the machine drags the thread. When the Quill Magician comes to you, it comes with a zero tolerance. So that if there is any space at all between the patterns, it will stop and tell you it will tie off and tell you to cut the thread. Then it will move to the next part of the pattern. I have gone into settings, which is one, two, three, four, the sixth icon on the left. It looks like gears. And gone in there and given my uh, Quill Magician permission to accept six inches of gem stitches. That I think is optimum. I, if you tell it to go anymore, sometimes we pull the fabric and break the thread. I just don't like to have to keep stopping and bringing up the bobbin thread. Now I'm going to pause this for a moment and trim the jump stitch so it doesn't become stitched over. I should have paused it a moment sooner. All right, so start it again. It just barely finished. All right, here's the next section. I'm going to let it stitch a few stitches, then I'm going to trim this jump stitch. Okay, another thing to notice when you're in settings is a word that says margin. What that is is a margin between your pattern and the edge of your pattern box. Its default comes as zero because most of us want to just have the pattern go right out to the edge of our box. But if there is a time when you want a certain margin between your pattern and your pattern box you've created, you can go into settings Touch the margin field and set uh, the margin you'd like. For instance, you may want a quarter inch margin between your block's uh, seam and your pattern. And maybe you don't want to have to measure that quarter inch yourself. All you have to do is create the, the block and the pattern box to be right on your block seam and go into margins and create a quarter inch margin there and it won't stitch on your seam, it'll stay a quarter inch away. So 
So that's another option you have in settings. Now notice it ties off between patterns, even if it jump stitches or if it asks you to bring up the thread. Either way, it'll tie off. <clears throat> the Quill Magician will allow you to create a pattern box with um, anywhere from two to innumerable points. However, if the two points you choose are on the same plane, it will complain and say that your pattern box is too small. Um, so, do, normally I go ahead and do all four corners of a square. Sometimes it shows we go a little quicker and do a diagonal of two different points to set a square. But in just a moment, our next box we're going to create is going to be a circle. And we'll be creating about 40 points on that circle so that uh, we have the maximum amount of space to put our pattern. You can create triangles really easily and there's a lot of nice triangle patterns to choose from. The Quill Magician comes with around 120 patterns already available to you, but using a USB stick, you're able to add others, and that will also be a topic of another uh, webinar to help you learn how to import and export patterns, and how to name and, and tag them in your uh, pattern icon area. And you're able to go on the websites or actually sometimes even have some um, heart, like a disc or something that you can get your patterns from and put them on the Quilt Magician. Now I am bringing up my bobbin thread so it doesn't drag all over the back of the quilt. I took a stitch and pulled it up. Now I'm going to hold on to the thread as it moves to the next spot because I don't want it to push a little loop to the back. Again, I'm going to floss up the, the bobbin thread and tell it to go. Now remember that the Quill Magician converts patterns that are um, formatted as DXF and QLI. It converts it to QCC. Now when you go online to choose patterns or you find a resource somewhere else that has quilting patterns, you need to make sure you choose a QLI or a DXF so that the Quill Magician can communicate with it. Formats are like a language. I'm going to bring up the bobbin thread by getting some extra thread at the bottom of the, on the quilt area and I'm going to take another stitch where it tied off, draw the machine back. You can see it brings up the bobbin thread and I'm going to snip it If you'd like to bury your threads, just leave it about nine inches of thread there and you can bury it later with a hand needle. And we're going to move over to the next pattern that we designed. I'm going to floss that bobbin thread up again and tell it to go. Playing dodgeball. There we go. Some of my favorite websites for patterns are uh, Urban Threads, Digitech Designs, Intelligent Designs, 
a golden thread and bright. If you just Google in quilting, or let's say digitized quilt patterns, it will sh bring up some of those others. Uh, we're, we've got a lot of beautiful digitizers out there, and quite frequently they'll have a free design of the month, three pattern of the month, and that will give you a chance to try them out to see if you like uh, the digitizing that's done on that site. Okay, another nice thing about going online and buying them is you op often have an option to choose parts and sections of a whole selection, um, a whole package that might have a corner and, and borders and blocks. And maybe you are only looking for blocks, patterns, so you, can, you have the option sometimes to buy the blocks independently rather than having to buy the whole package. So that's one of the beauties of looking online. <clears throat> now one thing to know is if your quilt magician has um, some type of a problem and it bumps against uh, something, maybe the rail or um, maybe it, it has a thread jam or something, it may be confused about the area it's supposed to quilt in. And if that happens, um, I would go ahead and into layout and adjust current pattern box and reset that pattern box to make sure it knows where it is and then set start to where you want it to start. And then it won't stitch out in a strange place. It'll be oriented back where you want it. Okay, we're almost done with this one and we can get started on our circle. I hope this is helpful to you to understand how you can use multiple patterns in a pattern box to make your blocks look beautiful. We have so many wonderful editing options to make it ju look just right. Okay, there is our finished block. How do you think it looks? Going to bring up the bobbin and then move the light back so you can see the whole thing a little better. Okay, so there are the lights a little back a little better. Can you see the whole thing? Didn't it turn out nicely? All right, we're going to move over to create a circle block that's over on the other side of the quilt. I'm going to move in just a moment. Michael will move over to that spot. It's about a 10 inch circle, just like our 10 inch square. And if you noticed when we created this square, the Quill Magician connected the dots we were making or the points we were making with straight lines. The Quill Magician won't give a curved line because it doesn't know you're doing a circle. And so what we need to do is make sure that we create as many points on this circle as possible so that we don't limit the space we have to quilt in. So I'm going to start um, around 9 o'clock just so I can keep track of where I am on the circle. And I'm going to come back to layout and tell it that I want another pattern box by touching the plus mark. It tells me to set the first point and so I'll touch plus. I'm going to move um, about an inch or so and another plus and come around. I'm trying not to go inside of that line because it gives us an error sometimes but we can still work around it. If we're doing a circle and we create one of the 
uh, points inside of the other points causing it to be um, concave then it won't smart scale but you can do all the other editing you can still scale it manually now are we on the yeah Mike I'm going to stop for a minute so they can see the screen maybe one more point will be better I want them to see how the quilt magician is connecting the dots and it's fairly circular because I've created several points. And you might wonder what this straight line is. That's the line from your, my first point to the one I'm on. Okay, I'm going to continue around my circle. Trying not to go inside. Now if you picture me only choosing, let's say, eight points, you can see this would look kind of like a stop sign. And all those areas where there's flat sides, it, um, our pattern, if we were trying to scale it, it, wouldn't, it would bump against those flat sides instead of fill those, that vacant area. All right, now remember, your last point can't overlap your first point. So I'm going to stop before I get back to 9 o'clock, and I'm going to say, okay, with the check mark, I'm done. And um, on the screen, um, you can see that I've created a fairly circular pattern box. Now just remember, this isn't going to stitch out, so it doesn't matter if it's perfect. The, the whole point is to make sure you have the maximum space to put your pattern in. Alright, so I'm going to touch pattern so that I can choose a pattern. Notice there's hardly any patterns on there. If that's the case, we touch filter. And we are going to um, choose feathered wreath. So I'm going to type in feathered Oops, I know what I'm doing. I'm not spelling very well today. Feathered and done. And we can see the feathered wreath right here. I'm going to touch, okay, I want that one, and check mark. Now you can see on the screen it's a very tiny um, pattern compared to my pattern box. So I'm going to go into scale, which is the fourth icon down. I'm going to make sure my padlock is locked and touch smart scale and I didn't make a problem by going inside my circle so it's smart scaled for me and there is our feathered wreath filling our circle that looks pretty good alright now I want to put something in the center of that circle which happens to be a butterfly so I'm going to go back to the pattern and I'm going to say filter and um, I'm going to, this happens to be an elegant butterfly, so I'm going to type elegant and done. And now we can see several elegant butterflies from the same uh, package. What we're going to do is choose this one up here who is setting up straight and it's actually a patinograph. You can see some tails on it to join it with other butterflies. I'm going to touch OK and you can see it goes in up at the top corner of our pattern box so we need to move it. We're going to come down to the second icon which is move and if I select my butterfly I'm actually able to drag it with my finger to get it about where I want it. We could also use our center vertically and center horizontally to get it in there. Now I want to make sure that my stitches aren't overlapping and from what I can see here it seems that they are. So I am going to um, actually I'm going to put my needle in the center of this box and I'm going to touch the third spyglass to the, from the left that's um, zoomed to my needle so now it's going to zoom near the center and I'm going to touch zoom can you see my crosshairs? It's zooming right to that area. And I can see that the 
butterfly's wings are touching where my feathers are, I want to make that smaller. So I'm going to go into my scale, which is a fourth icon down. I'm going to make sure my padlock's locked because I do want this one to remain um, proportional. But I can't tell it to fill any area particularly, so I need to manually change the size. If the padlock is locked, I'm able to make this smaller proportionally just by touching one of the drawbars. And what I want is for these little tails to actually uh, be buried in my other stitching. So I'm going to go back to move and see if I move it centered again if that will happen. It looks to me like it's slightly out, so I'm going to go back to scale and maybe bump it once more, maybe twice. Well, let's do three times. <laughs> All right, now we'll go back to move and center, center. That looks pretty good to me. And if I worry about it, I can zoom in even farther. All right, we have a few minutes. I hope we can stitch this out, but this has is the point where we're going to actually change the stitch out order. I'm going to touch view my box by touching this uh, icon over here. Um, while we're doing that, let me show you what the layout looks like by touching the icon that looks like a nine patch. You can see everything that we've set up for today. Go back to view my pattern box. And now when I tell it to stitch, I'm ready to do that, I'm going to go to the house, which is our stitch icon, and I want to stitch it out, so I'm going to touch the green dot. Now we're going to use our pattern order because it's better to stitch the center out before the outer edges so we don't have any landlocked fabric. I'm going to touch pattern order. What we see along here is every pattern we've put on here. You can see my bachelor buttons. You can see the four corners I put in. You can see the feathered wreath. And now we can see the elegant butterfly stitching out last. So I'm going to tell the butterfly by touching it. It's really hard to see probably for you, but it is selected now. I'm going to touch this arrow that's pointing to the right. It's coming over and now it's going to stitch out first. The Quill Magician has automatically highlighted feathered wreath for me. If it doesn't happen to do that, go ahead and touch it. And then I'm going to tell it to stitch out second. Now notice, if I chose these others, we could have it stitch out again if we needed to for some reason. All right, so now I'm going to tell it to go ahead and stitch. It's going to give me the same um, warning about the needle being down, and I'm going to tell it to go. And notice, here we go to our butterfly. Let's we'll see if we can get some of these stitched out so you can watch it stitch. And we can answer some questions while we do that. Okay, I have a question. What if you have a block that is too big for the quilt area. Oh, I lost it, it bounced down, okay. Um, like a, a large star, do you split the pattern? We don't have that capacity right now to split the pattern. So we'd have to wait for some update of that kind of thing. So you would have to, um, I guess we could use crop on that. You know what? Um, if you wouldn't mind emailing me so that I could experiment with that because we could crop the sections off and um, stitch it out that way. My email is m as in Mary, yrl at tinlizzy 18com If you wouldn't mind emailing me with that question so I can remember to follow up on that and we can talk about that in another webinar. We have a crop feature. So we might be able to crop the different sections and move um, the pattern around. I really think we might be able to do that. 
I've never tried it, so that will be fun to try. Um, what is the most current version of the Quilt Magician? I bought mine in 2015, and it does not look like this. That's a good question. You sound like you have the original Quilt Magician. Uh, the current version is actually an Android tablet, so it has a different um, format. So this one works differently. We will be having some recordings with the Quilt Magician, the original Quilt Magician, rather than webinars, because um, we have a lot of people who have the Android and it's new, so they're wanting to get it fixed. I have a lot of, um, I don't mean fixed, they want to be able to know how to use it, I'm sorry. Um, I have several documents that could help people who have the original Quilt Magician. I have a nesting document, I have a properties document, and a um, file manager document that can help you. So I would be glad to email those to you. Donna, if you would like to send me your email address at Merle, M as in Mary, Y-R-L, at tinlizzy18.com and I can send you those documents and anybody else listening who would like to um, have those documents. I'd love to send them to you. Are there any other questions? Alright, now you've noticed that this pattern has done a jump stitch between the butterfly and the feathered wreath and now it's going to do a little jump stitch between the inside of the wreath and the outside of the wreath. And I can trim those later. I'd like to get those documents also but missed your email address. Alright, I'm Merle, so it's M as in Mer Mary, Y as in yellow, R L at 10 Lizzie 18, so it's the number 18, T I N L I Z Z I E, the number 18.com. I'd be happy to send those to anyone who would like them. All right. Well, that timing worked pretty good. Now, do you have any questions about the methods that we've done today? About scaling or uh, moving, mirror image? I am also uh, do some technical calls with people who have different issues um, that an educator could help with. So d feel free to email me if you come upon a problem that you'd like help with that you think I might have the knowledge to help you with. All right, now there we have our finished block. I'm going to go over and um, trim the threads so that you can see the finished block without all the machine in the way. What I do is I, I pull some extra thread from the side of my machine so that I have it down here at the bottom to hold on to so I can pull my bobbin thread up. Then I touch my complete stitch button and as I draw it back you can see that it brings up the bobbin thread. I'm going to trim those off. If I was someone who wanted to bury them I would keep that at about nine inches and uh, bury it later with a uh, hand needle. All right, there's our block all finished. So we have learned how to change our stitch out order. We've learned how to put multiple patterns inside a box, um, how to edit each one, how to select them so that the quilt magician knows which one that is to be edited. We've learned how to look at the pattern box view and we've also learned how to look if you want to move this, the camera up, we've also learned how to look at the full layout view. 
this is everything we've stitched out today. If we wanted to save it, we would go to layout. I would touch the little floppy disk and it brings up a, a window and I could name it what I wanted to do to name it. So I could name it two blocks so I would know how to find it and say OK with a check mark and next time I could um, find it by looking for that. Now let me show you how to close out the Quilt Magician before we end tonight. Um, down at the very bottom of the Android screen are the Android icons. Touch the house first, that gets you to the home screen. Next to the home screen are two rectangles that will show you all of the applications that are open. When I touch it, now you can see a little window that shows the Quilt Magician. In order to close that application, you just swipe it off the screen and it's gone. Now that we're actually looking at the screen, I'd like to show you up here in the corner of the Android screen are six little squares. When you touch them, it opens up the apps that are available to you. And see, there are many. Just, it's like any Android tablet that you are able to use. Just remember to close your app so when you open it back up to use it in the next day, the Quilt Magician will be fresh and clean and ready to go. Is there one, more, one or two more questions? We have a couple of more minutes. Let's see. <laughs> I'm so used to using the touch screen. I'm trying to touch this computer screen. All right. Okay, uh, the question said, could you show us at the end how to close out the application? And we just did that. Can I do some of the same pattern box work with my uh, 2015? Yes, you can. Um, I would be glad, in fact, perhaps I need to make some more documentation for that. Um, Erica, make sure that you mention that you have that uh, original version and I will work on some other documentation on how to create those two blocks that we just did today for the original one. That's a great idea, Erica. Thank you. Can this work on an iPad? No. This particular um, Android has been formatted uh, with the correct operating system, which is not an iPad uh, version. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, some questions. When, when will the webinar be available to view again? We usually have it on our website at about a week later. And um, the way to find it is tinlizzy18.com. On the web page on the left hand side is a list and menu. Under uh, learning centers, we have webinars and other uh, videos that we've recorded that it would be really helpful to you. That's where you'll find it. Thank you so much. We are trying to have a webinar every month. Um, we have got two other educators on board with us so that we'll be able to rotate through our different expertise to help you out. All right, one more time. The website is tinlizzie18, T-I-N-L-I-Z-Z-I-E, 18.com. My email is Merle, M is in Mary, Y-R-L, at tinlizzie18.com. T-I-N-L-I-Z-Z-I-E 18.com. Thank you for joining us. We really enjoy having you. Goodbye.